What is up everybody, Renfail here, back again with some No Man's Sky, and today I want to talk about my perspective as a new player coming into this game with the Worlds Part 1 update, and sort of a, you know, should you play this game in 2024 with the new update? What does it feel like? Is it worth it? Uh, this is a major update to the game eight years after its launch. I don't have the history and the baggage that a lot of people have with this title, so I'm coming into this with a fresh perspective. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, I kind of did this with World of Warcraft at the end of 2023, coming into a 20-year-old game and going, hey, this is actually really polished and really good. Let me take a look. Um, so I've been doing that here on the... Uh, well, I've been playing on the PC, and I just switched over... Uh, today and since the update went live on the Xbox, we're now on the Xbox today. Um, we are on a new planet which we can kind of see around us and we've got the new water at play over here to the left. Um, I've been, I'd spent the, you know, my early hours of the game building a, a, a outpost on the tutorial place they sent me but then I went exploring this morning when I was out checking out the new update and I found this and I went, you know what, I'm going to start a brand new settlement here because this place looks really cool. And this is the perfect time for me to talk about sort of what I think about the the game so far. Um, should you play it, um, and kind of go from there. Um, I'll have a different video out about like the new player experience and everything else because I think that's very important for people like me who are coming into the game for the first time. But for today, let's let's keep it simple. Um, should you play it? So um, I will say that one of the things that I appreciated right out of the gate um, is as you get into the game. The tutorial system is super, super, super deep. So I have yet to find a moment where I was confused about something. Um, going through the game, it's all very, it's very much, um, we're going to teach you how to do this with baby steps and you'll learn as you go. And then as I've gotten deeper into the game, I've been able to take those early gameplay mechanics and use them to sort of figure other things out. Some things ahead of schedule because then it comes up in the tutorial later. And there's also been a great outpouring of support from the community and people who have been tuning into my streams and watching the videos and leaving great comments and tips and everything else. I've actually got... Um, as I do with all, I know there's a lot of new people on the channel for No Man's Sky, so if, you, if you're new here, this is, I'll explain this. So I take notes, uh, this is my latest um, notebook, um, and I create a lot of beginner's guides around the games that I play, and it's usually made up from things that I've learned, figuring things out for the first time as a new player into games, or um, things that people have told me. So I've got some tips written down here that community members have left on videos and stuff. So I want to say shout out to everybody for being so helpful above and beyond the tutorials. But um, it's been very, very easy to play, and that was something where, having played a lot of crafting survival games over the last few years, especially early access titles, it's not always that you find a game that has a really good tutorial system. Um, I would look at, say, you know, Valheim, and um, and I know this isn't an early, it's not an early access title. This is a launched eight years in the making they've had time to work on the tutorial but this is the difference i want to make the distinction i want to make playing early access titles like valheim and enshrouded um v rising things of that nature once human there are usually some form of tutorials in those games but not as polished as it is here uh, it's been very very good in how to play the game and you can always go in here and look at um you know, you've got the catalog and guide. You've got a log that you can go through and look at all the things that you're currently working on, what you need to um, explore for secondary missions and so on and so forth, how to use your visor and everything else. Um, you can go in here into your discoveries and look at the things you've discovered on various planets and your waypoints, what flora, fauna, and minerals you've discovered. Um, there's this whole guide on how to get started, which I think is incredibly useful it, so that if you've gone through the tutorial and you've forgotten certain elements of it, you could dive back in here and sort of go in. And, and, and you know, I think that from a perspective of someone coming into an eight-year-old game, this is the kind of stuff that helps me make a decision of, is this something I should play or not? Because if they've taken the time to lay things out, and again, I'm going to do another video on the new user experience later on, but this is mostly, you know, there's tons of tutorials here to help you get started. So if you're worried about this feeling like it's too much or it's too overwhelming please put that out of your mind because they've done a really good job at getting new players into the game 
eight years on. I'm a perfect example of that. So um, th the other thing I will say, too, is that um, this did not exist at the beginning of the game. But you can go in here and there's all these different options that you can a, you know change with the difficulty level also when you're first starting the game you get the option to go in and choose do you want to do like normal mode do you want to do relaxed mode what do you want to do but you can also come in here and adjust all of the various survival elements the difficulty of those you know how many natural resources are available what's the sprinting like um, you know all of these different things can be tweaked to your absolute heart's content so I feel like this is another aspect of saying, hey, if you've never played a crafting survival game and you want to jump into this game and you start to feel that things might be a little overwhelming, you can go into the options and you can turn those elements down or turn them off completely in many cases so that you don't have that issue. So here's a good example of what I want to talk about real quick because right now it says environmental warning. I'm inside my ship right now. External toxicity 107.8. It says weather pouring toxic rain. This is a really cool planet. I really like the look of this planet. However, it is a corrosive planet. As a result, it has acid rain. So if we want to build something here, it's going to be somewhat of a challenge because I do have to pay attention to the weather and my spacesuit, and it's going to require me to want to mod my suit to make my suit a little better. Um, the other planet I have set up is, is it, it doesn't have this, and we'll end up back there eventually, but this is something that I think would be really fun for a challenge, so I've kind of landed here to do things for a little bit here just to do something outside of the box and mostly because there's this beautiful body of water here and I got sidetracked and went I want to build something here as an experiment it's also something to, fun to do on a stream to show people uh, which is the perfect way for me to plug by the way um, daily streams here and on Twitch uh, we will be streaming this game for the foreseeable future through July into August at least until the mid to late August when the War Within drops on August 22nd and really when uh, uh, Star Wars Outlaws kicks off on August 30th I'm going to be really busy then with like Star Wars Outlaws, Stalker 2, Space Marine 2, we've got Shattered Space DLC for Starfield, we've got uh, Avowed coming up, we've got Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard, we've got Indiana Jones The Great Circle, there's just a slew of games from August onwards. So I don't know how much I'll be playing of No Man's Sky after that, but definitely going to be having this be the main game for July into August. It might happen, it might go beyond that, you never know, this might be a game that I add into my permanent repertoire like I've done with things like Lord of the Rings Online, World of Warcraft, uh, Star Wars Yield Republic. Um, those are the types of games that I've played over the years consistently. This is a lot of fun, but also Light No Fire is coming down the pipeline soon. I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, so if I go out, if I go out of my ship right now, this is something that, you know, I think for new players, this might feel overwhelming. Because once I get out of my ship, I'm now exposed to the elements. Um, and what happens is, um, you'll notice here behind me, my protection is going down very quickly. And that's because I'm on normal settings. So um, if I stay out in the corrosive rain like this, I'm going to take, it's going to take a lot of resources to keep my suit um, maintained. And or I would need to go out and get updates and everything else. Um, and so this is one of those things where if, if you feel like that's too challenging, right? We'll go ahead and regen back here in my ship. You can go into the options here and change the difficulty settings and say, you know what, I want the survival elements um, off, actually. Um, so I want health and shields, protection against environmental hazards. I want all this stuff off so that I don't have to worry about that at all so I can just run around and explore the planets. There's also like a creative mode so you can go in here and you can go in here and there's actually difficulty presets that you can, that you can set here. Um, so you can take a look at this, go to creative mode if you want, um, and that changes things from there. There's also a relaxed mode and survival mode if you want to go hardcore. Um, so there are lots of different options, and I think for new players, um, that's a big deal. Um, so that's one of those things where I would say, if you've never played a crafting survival game before, I think that this might be a good entry into what it's like to play one. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, you also have not just the fact that, you know, we can get out of our ship. Um, I don't have a base built here because I just got here, but we can come over here. We can harvest resources here. We can check out all these things. We can start harvesting, analyzing, scanning. Um, but then also I'd be like, well, what do I want to build here? You know, do I want to build a base? Oh, the, the weather's... So the storm's clearing. So we're about to... The, the weather's about to go away, which means my suit will start regening a little more. Uh, it won't it won't deteriorate as quickly I guess is what I'm getting at um, 
visually this place looks breathtaking. I totally want to build something over here with the backdrop of these uh, plants and everything else. Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. Um... But once you get out here, there's lots of stuff to do. You have your mining tool, which can turn into a weapon as well, which I haven't gotten that deep into it. But then we have your ship. And the ship is one of these things where I was totally surprised where it, it did take me a little bit to get used to how to fly this thing around. Um, but this is one of the coolest features because we can come in here and we've got the ability to sort of fly around the planet and, you know, speed up we slow down if we want turn over here this is where I want to land we can also go up into space and stuff um, I haven't done that yet because I don't want to lose this uh, this um, this landing spot because I, I, I get lost still very easily but we can come over here and we can say you know what I, I like this spot we're gonna go back in we're gonna slow down and we're gonna land right here go into space there's space combat um, there's all sorts of different things you can do in this game. And I think that's one of the things that has impressed me the most is above and beyond like the normal crafting survival games that I would play. Like let's take Shroud and Shrouded as an example. And Shrouded has a cool gliding feature, which is a lot of fun. But mostly in Shrouded is a typical crafting survival game, right? With some RPG elements to it and a skill tree, which is kind of what makes it Shrouded unique. But this game has space flight. You're going planet to planet. There's all this procedural generation at play. There's quests that have storyline, although the story is not presented in like a traditional RPG format, but you do find quest NPCs and there's space stations and hubs and places you can go where you can uncover storylines. There's missions you can do. Um, like I said, for, for someone like me who's coming into this game as a completely new player, I look at the fact that there's eight years of content available combined with something that looks great, performs great, uh, at least for me, I realize it's not the same for everybody. Like if you're playing on Steam and you want to try it on the PS5, you can't do crossplay, but like or cross saves. But like for me, since I have an Xbox Ultimate subscription for Game Pass, I'm able to switch between my PC and my Xbox at will. If I go on the road, I can play no matter if my device is like if I'm playing primarily in the Xbox at home, but then I go on the road and maybe I'm at my brother's house and I'm playing on his Xbox, I can log in there and play. Or if I'm gonna take my laptop with me and I can play on the road and you know have all my cross play and cross saves be I keep saying cross play but what I mean is my cross saves are all there for me there's a lot to like in this game and there's a lot of content which is why for me I can you know this is something where easily it's going to consume a couple months of my life as I get deeper and deeper into the experience with No Man's Sky so if all of that sounds fun to you this is what I'm going to say like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams here and on Twitch. I think you should play this game. Um, it kind of depends on where you're playing it as to what it costs. Um, since I have Game Pass, it was free to me. Um, but I realize that's because of the, the perks of the subscription. But, you know, you can also pick it up normally on the PC or the Xbox or the PlayStation. Play it there wherever you want. Um, the World's Update 1 that they just launched is what got me excited especially with like the water which you can see behind me the new water and the new volumetric clouds everything the landing sequence into this planet was really 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 cool um so i'm looking forward to exploring this planet more hopefully you'll tune in live to watch me do that before we go back to like following the main storyline so in the meantime i'll see everybody in the next one i gotta get prepped for a stream don't forget to check out all the socials the discord the patreon until next time everybody stay safe happy gaming